Well, nobody really knows who they are once they stop fooling themselves. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so then we'll just go with... I'm, I'm a strange alien and extraterrestrial that find myself on the wrong planet. My name is Peter John Kraft. Uh, I am a professor of philosophy at Boston College. I was born and brought up into a pious uh, Calvinist evangelical family in the Reformed Church of America. My father was an elder in the church and I always looked up to him and loved him and respected him. And I am immensely grateful to that community for uh, teaching me who Jesus is and what the meaning of my life is. I remember having an argument with my father when I must have been about 10 years old. I didn't see what was wrong with the theory of evolution and he did and he tried to convince me and he failed. Uh, because I was just a smart-alecky kid that asked all sorts of questions. Uh, I remember hearing a sermon on the book of Ecclesiastes, and I said to my father, this is brilliant, what is it? He said, it's philosophy. So I said, well, I'm going to be a philosopher. Uh, I remember a time we visited St. Patrick's Cathedral. It was the first Catholic church I had ever been in. Uh, I must have been about 10 years old. And I said to my father, this is a Catholic church, isn't it? And he said, yes. And I said, the Catholics are wrong, aren't they? And he said, yes. I said, then how can their churches be so beautiful? He said, oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But it mattered to me. So I kept, you know, asking questions all the time. The only real crisis of faith I had was, as a teenager, I didn't want to go to heaven because I thought it was an eternal church service, which bored me. I didn't want to go to the other place either, and I knew I couldn't stay here forever, so I had a problem. At Calvin, uh, I learned a lot about uh, history and church history and uh, the differences between the denominations. Uh, and Catholicism began to make a little more sense to me, especially when I did some research uh, on it on my own. Their take on Thomas Aquinas, for instance, was that he was a very thinly baptized pagan. Uh, and definitely a Pelagian. And I read the Summa and I said, that's not so. He's a Calvinist, for goodness sakes. Uh, the crisis, I think, came in uh, a church history class where the professor, uh, a very good man, uh, Dr. Widenar, he was a preacher as well as a, a PhD, uh, explained the difference between the Protestant and the Catholic notion of what the church is. Uh, he drew two pictures on the board. One was Noah's Ark and the other was a tree. And he said, the Catholic picture is that uh, Christ planted a tree in the form of an acorn, and it gradually grew into this big oak that we now see called the Catholic Church. Uh, and uh, then about 1,500 years later, uh, Luther and Calvin broke some branches off and tried to plant a new one, and you can't do that. Uh, our notion is that there is only one church, and it's the invisible church, and it's Noah's Ark, and it's the agent of salvation. Uh, and it sailed through history and got a lot of barnacles on it. Uh, and it was about to sink. And Luther and Calvin were two of the sailors who went overboard and says, hey, we've got to scrape those barnacles off and restore the ancient purity. And I remember saying, well, that makes things very simple. At that point, I was not seriously thinking of becoming a Catholic, but semi-seriously. So I raised my hand and said, uh, Professor, do you mean if my Catholic neighbor and I both took a time machine back to the early church, uh, and worship there together side by side, that I as a Protestant would feel more at home than he as a Catholic. And I remember his looking at me and saying, that's a very strange way of putting it, time machine and all, but yes, that's exactly what I mean. So I said to myself, oh good, I'll just read the early church fathers and prove to myself how Protestant they are and that I'm in the right church. I didn't want to become a Catholic. You know the rest of the story. <laughs> it was Newman's uh, basic uh, road. Look at the data. Look at what the early church believed. Uh, look at the, uh, the non-existence of all the post-Reformation controversies. Look at how easily the church gradually accepted sacramentalism and papal authority and uh, all the rest of it. The one thing I knew for sure was not whether I should be a Catholic or a Protestant, but I had to be a Christian. Christ was my Lord. I had to follow him wherever he led me. And if he led me out of my familiar and beloved little Protestant lifeboat into this big smelly thing called Noah's Ark, I had to follow, although I didn't want to. Uh, that was my absolute. So reading the New Testament uh, with Protestant eyes and Catholic eyes, the Catholic eyes made a lot more sense of some of the passages. Uh, and to say you can just skip the whole history of the church as if those 1500 years didn't exist uh, and go from 1517 back to 33 AD is a little dishonest. Here is data. Uh, how could the church have gotten almost everything wrong so soon and the Holy Spirit fell asleep for 1,500 years. That didn't make much sense. 
The one doctrine that, that blew me away was the real presence. Nobody denied it until Berenger of Tours in about 1100. Everybody uh, said, this, this is Christ himself. This is not just a holy symbol. I said, wait a minute, that's, that's horrible idolatry. That's bowing down to bread and worshiping wine, thinking it's almighty God. How could God have let the church commit idolatry for 1,500 years? That doesn't make much sense. As a non-Catholic, I didn't understand sacramentalism, and I didn't instinctively accept it. I was something of a, a spiritualist or a Gnostic. You know, matter is just stuff out there. It's not holy. And then I looked at my own body and said, well, that's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Maybe it is. My first day at the graduate school at Yale, I knocked on the door of the rectory. The priest came down. It was 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, he was still in his nightshirt. I had wakened him up. He said, yeah, what can I do for you? And I said, all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, Father, I want to become a Catholic. And he smiled and said, that's nice. So who's the girl? <laughs> he was very practical. So I'd come with uh, questions from the Summa Theologica or, or St. John of the Cross, and he'd said, well, let's start with the Penny Catechism. Let's walk before you fly. And he brought me down to earth. He was wonderful. That was 1960. Marrying a church and marrying my wife were the two smartest things I ever did. Mm -hmm.